Hi, and welcome to another episode of Emerald Isle Vacation Home Specialist. I am your host, Dennis Richkowski. Some of you recognize me as the co-owner of Flip Flops Donuts, and some of you know me as your broker of real estate, specializing in waterfront and water view properties along the Crystal Coast, especially on Bogue Banks and in Emerald Isle, North Carolina. As I record this, many states along the eastern seaboard have experienced a weather event known as Tropical Storm Isa Ias, and I bring this up for three important reasons. First, the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season is becoming one for the ages. It is the first hurricane season on record in which nine tropical storms formed before August 1st. The season officially started on June 1, but the formation of tropical cyclones is possible at any time as evinced by the formation of tropical storms Artha and Bertha on May 6th and 27th, respectively, making it six consecutive years with pre-season systems. Earlier than normal activity continued into June with tropical storm Cristobal becoming the earliest third name storm on record when it formed on June 2nd. In July, tropical storms Idvar, Faye, Gonzala, Hana, and Isa Ias also became the earliest 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th named storms, forming on July 4, 9, 21, 23, and 30, respectively. Living as I do on the North Carolina Outer Banks, tropical storms are a way of life, not unlike tornadoes in the Midwest earthquakes in California, and blizzards in the Northeast. Unsettling as it is, we've been in a period of higher than normal tropical storm activity for nearly 25 years. Going back to 1996, that year had the most hurricanes since 1950, with 13 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and 6 major hurricanes. Already in 2020, we have had nine named storms, and we are only at the beginning of August. Yikes! Second, as I record this, Tropical Storm Isa Ias has left the Carolinas and is heading into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeastern Seaboard. After spending the weekend well off the coast of Florida, with only the outer bands of the storm impacting the peninsula, Tropical Storm Isa Ias it developed sustained winds of 85 miles an hour and became a Category 1 hurricane before reaching landfall around 11 p.m. Monday evening near Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, close to the border with South Carolina. Once over land, the storm downgraded to a tropical storm with maximum sustained winds around 70 miles an hour. But that doesn't mean the danger was over. Tropical storm warnings continue to extend all the way to the main Canada border. Here in North Carolina, the storm brought strong winds, storm surges, high surf, heavy rain, some flash flooding, and a few brief tornadoes. In the next 24 hours, the storm will bring winds and heavy bands of rain all along the East Coast the major metropolitan areas of Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York will be especially affected, as will coastal areas adjacent to the Delaware Bay, tidal Potomac River, Chesapeake Bay, and Long Island Sound. By Wednesday morning, New Hampshire and Maine will see rain as a result of the storm. As tropical storms go, Isa Ias is a teetering sort of thing, a strong tropical storm or a really weak hurricane. It will probably be remembered mainly for the copious amounts of rain it dumped on major portions of the East Coast. That being said, Isa Ias, whether a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane, caused the state of North Carolina to announce mandatory evacuations of several barrier islands on Friday several days before the storm began impacting Florida, let alone North Carolina. Holden Beach and Ocean Isle Beach, which are close to the South Carolina border, 
and Hatteras Island and Ocracoke Island, which are part of the North Carolina Outer Banks, were placed under mandatory evacuations on Saturday. And these evacuations included not only renters, vacationers, and guests, but also property owners and residents. You might wonder why the state of North Carolina was being so, so cautious over what was a relatively minor weather event. Well, Hatteras Island, which includes the villages of Rodanthe, Waves, Salvo, Avon, Buxton, Frisco, and, Hat and Hatteras Village, was evacuated due to the vulnerability of Highway 12 and the fact that it is the only road that provides access to and from the mainland. Indeed, several vulnerable spots along Highway 12 on Hatteras Island were already experiencing minor ocean overwash during periods of high tide on Friday for a storm that had yet to reach the coast of Florida. Yikes! Holden Beach and Ocean Isle Beach evacuations were prompted by potential of severe erosion and likely infrastructure damage. Double yikes. And the evacuation of Ocracoke Island was prompted by, one, the severe flooding the island experienced last September from Hurricane Dorian, two, limited access to and from the island by ferry, and three, the ongoing challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Triple yikes. Here in Emerald Isle, the forecast did not trigger any evacuations along the Crystal Coast or Bogue Banks, and we did not undertake any severe storm preparedness, even though we were closer to the eye of the storm than either Hatteras or Ocracoke Islands. Which brings me to my third main point. In real estate, everything is all about location, location, location. And that is especially true when you are thinking about purchasing real estate on a barrier island along the Atlantic or Gulf Coasts. My wife and I had the resources to purchase property anywhere on the North Carolina Outer Banks. We could have purchased property on Hatteras or Ocracoke Islands or Holden or Ocean Isle beaches. But who wants to have to evacuate days in advance of a tropical storm? A tropical storm that is many hundreds of miles away. That tells me that these barrier islands and beaches are no place to be when a storm of hurricane force makes landfall nearby. Instead, we chose to purchase oceanfront property in Emerald Isle on Bogue Banks. We did so not only for the family-friendly reputation Emerald Isle enjoys, but also for its natural protection the island provides against formidable tropical storms. These natural protections include a wide, expansive beach, high dunes, a maritime forest, and a mile-wide island that is oriented east-west. To learn more about buying coastal property along the Outer Banks, go to Amazon.com and purchase my latest book, Live Where You Vacation. And when you decide to purchase Barrier Island property, Emerald Isle should be your top choice as well. And when you want to look at property in my town, call or text me at 919-308-2292. And return next week to the same bat channel at the same bat time of 9 a.m. on Thursday for another episode of Emerald Isle Vacation Home Specialist.